Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tyler, and today we are going to be continuing the What If Naruto Had Adam's Eyes saga and actually finishing it off with this final part. With that being said, if you guys haven't seen the two other previous installments, I'm not going to recap for you. I'll leave a playlist link down in the description so you guys can personally go check out the first two parts for yourself and then come back to this video. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's just cut this intro short and get straight into part three because we do in fact have a lot to cover. So in the last part, we had our characters heading off, and basically we we're getting into the transition of Shippuden, or aka the training arc, for the next two and a half years, which I'm going to say here, Naruto is actually able to master his Atom Eyes, especially since he has Minato there to mentor him. With Minato's presence, I think it's easy for Naruto, way easier than for him to train by himself for the next two and a half year gap to basically master these eyes. And with this, Naruto is able to copy not only one ability before collapsing, but multiple. And Naruto can actually control himself to a point to where he won't exactly collapse. At this point, he's basically transitioning into his Adam point in the series. And what I mean by this is Naruto is at a point with his abilities to the point to where it's actually similar to how Adam uses it. In record of ragnarok to where he isn't going to be collapsing after using it once or is able to copy things pretty casually at this point point. and with this we obviously have naruto increasing in basic physical you know prowess because you know he is training with the fourth hokage for the next two and a half years who is stronger than naruto so by the end of the two and a half year gap he's not only physically superior to his base shippuden self he is also, in terms of hacks abilities, way stronger. And I would think Naruto's reaction speed in specific would be way higher than his Shippuden self, considering the fact that he's training with Minato, who's all about speed. And maybe you can have his base speed being stronger, like his combat speed and travel speed, but regardless, he's still physically above his Shippuden self. And while this is going down, Sakura would be training with the likes of Kurenai, since she's not going to be training with Tsunade, since that arc never even happens entirely, so she'll just enhance her Genjutsu. And while that goes down, Sasuke would be training with Kakashi, and like in my other what-ifs where Sasuke would be training with Kakashi, he really only increases in terms of physical prowess, his lightning abilities, and he would have the three Tomo Sharingan, and Kakashi would be at the same level, but just physically stronger. Now with this, we would then move into the Kaze Kage rescue mission where we would have Rasa alive and Gara are in this timeline as well. Now with Gara not getting Takano Jutsu'd by Naruto or any of that, this Gara probably wouldn't be the fifth Kaze Kage, but rather the Hokage aid or Kaze Kage aid. And this would then lead into Deidara and Saucer heading into the Sand Village, and Deidara would capture Gara in this timeline. However, in the process of trying to capture Gara, Rasa would actually manage to damage Deidara pretty heavily. And while he's about to capture Gara, and seemingly he would, Rasa would use the last bit of his chakra to finish off Deidara. Similar to my other what ifs of Rasa surviving, we would have Saucery come in, kill Rasa, and take Gara away. And with this, this would then lead into Team 7 having no other choice but to go out and try and stop them from capturing Gara. And since there's no medical ninjutsu Sakura here, this would mean Conqueror would probably die, and as for the retake of the Bell Test, Team 7 would just pass away easier than in canon. Now, we would move on to the Itachi clone and Chiyo being recruited onto the team, where we would have the Itachi clone being defeated by Naruto and Sasuke working together, and he would be defeated way earlier than in canon. And with this, this would give them actually a lot more time to go out and try and figure out where Saucery is extracting the Biju from Gara. And since Deidara isn't there, the extraction process is going to be a lot slower, meaning Gara isn't going to have his Biju extracted in this timeline. Rather, what would probably happen is Team 7 would basically pull up to where Saucery is, Naruto would just break through the barrier, and we would then get Saucery getting jumped by Team 7 and Chiyo, which I think they would be able to handle it. Given the fact that Naruto is not only faster and stronger, we have Chiyo in this timeline able to basically counteract the whole puppet thing that Saucery is doing, and we could just have Team 7 just off guarding him unironically. Or we could maybe have, I don't know, Naruto just copying Saucery and copying his basic stats, which would allow him to basically, you know, scrap with him and then allow Chiyo to distract him with the puppets. And when we get into, you know, Saucery's little weakness thing with the chest, I think Kakashi here would actually use this to his advantage and actually Kamui the chest thing that Saucery has, instantly killing him. And this would mean that the second Akatsuki member of the art duo would be finished and Gara would be saved. 
However, because Gara still has his Biju, this makes him still a target for the Akatsuki. And with this, there's not going to really be anyone in the Sand Village that can, you know, eventually just take out all of the Akatsuki. Like, Gara is going to be inevitably kidnapped again, so he needs to be, you know, a lot safer. So I'm going to say here, instead of Gara going back to the Leaf Village, we would have Chio become the fifth Kazekage, since I think it kind of fits appropriately here, since she is probably the strongest one in the Sand Village. That's not Tamari or Konkuro, or I guess Tamari, since Konkuro is dead in this timeline. So I think Gara is going to be taken to the Leaf Village and is going to be guarded by not only Minato's high elite Jonin, but probably Team 7. Like, I can definitely see after this encounter, Gara and Naruto can maybe bond with each other a lot more, and I think Gara would actually change in character, and where we would get the change in character from Gara in part 1, we would get it here. And now we can move on to the rest of the Shippuden arcs, which honestly are either the same or just don't happen at all. For example, the second Sasuke rescue mission doesn't happen at all, and Orochimaru would be in prison while Sasuke is also good, so it's just not gonna happen, like, at all. And as for the Kakuzu arc, the first half would happen the same, and instead of just only Kakashi going out with Team 10, it would also be Sasuke. And I think when Naruto wants to go out and help out his friends, Gara would like to come along too, because he doesn't want to stay back and just you know, be the guy that people need to protect. And since Naruto is basically in the same situation as, you know, Gara, Gara should be allowed to go with Naruto. And when Gara makes this point, I think Naruto would allow Gara to accompany him, and him and Naruto would arrive onto the battlefield, where Naruto would copy Kakuzu's exact style. So basically, when Kakuzu would shoot out like a fire migraine jutsu combined with wind style that would seemingly kill Team 10 and Kakashi and Sasuke, Naruto would actually copy Kakuzu's hardening jutsu and basically eat the attack. As this happens, Naruto copies Kakuzu's jutsu and is prepared to throw it right back at him, but in reaction, Kakuzu is ready to block. However, Gara would then come out of nowhere and actually tag Kakuzu with his sand paralysis which would basically leave Kakuzu vulnerable for Naruto's next attack, which would overwhelm Kakuzu and destroy the rest of his heart. If not, if that attack wouldn't do it, then he would just spam Kakuzu's Jutsu. That's essentially just his, like literally Kakuzu's Jutsu, but just better. So it wouldn't matter. Regardless, Kakuzu is going to inevitably be killed and the immortal duo of the Akatsuki would also be defeated. I know y'all heard that screaming in the background. They fucking screamed one more time. Uh, anyways, yeah, we would then move on to the Jiraiya arc, which I think is pretty much similar to in canon, except Minato and Jiraiya are the ones talking, and Jiraiya would go out and face pain, die to pain, and this would then lead into Naruto training out on Mount Miyoboku. For Jiraiya, of course. And while this goes down, we would have the Pain Assault arc. And as for the Itachi arc, I'm going to say here that it doesn't happen at all in this timeline. It's just kind of impossible for this to happen. And normally in my other what is, I write a way for this to work. But for this timeline, I'm going to say it's not going to happen at all. So this means Itachi is going to be sick for, you know, whenever he gets capped. But he's not going to die as early as he did. And with this, we would then move on to the Pain Assault arc, where we would have Pain attacking all of Konoha. And this would even lead into Minato dropping down into the battlefield and actually giving Pain the work. Now, Minato is a lot faster than Pain and could easily knock him out due to how much faster he is, meaning that Pain can't perceive him, which means the Renegon can't hard counter him. And with the likes of Kakashi, Choji, and Choza there, who were damn near close to defeating the Diva and Asura path, plus Haruzen as backup, and if they need to, maybe free Orochimaru for some more backup and then lock him up after the assault, it's just honestly in Konoha's favor, and I think inevitably with Minato's help, they'll be able to defeat Pain even before Naruto arrives. And if Naruto arrives with the Atom Eyes, it's gonna be over. And just in case if you guys forgot, Minato has the Atom Eyes as well, or the Eyes of the Lord as well. So he can theoretically make Shadow Clones and make his own six paths of pain and counteract pain, but with stronger and faster paths of pain. And if you wanna say Naruto is required, then you can just have Minato and Naruto doing the father son duo and Wombo comboing pain even before the Chibaku Tensei is even released, or even before Hinata dies. Now, personally, I would like for Hinata to establish that she does love naruto even after the pain assault so we can maybe have their relationship blossom unlike in canon and with this we would have the five kage summit which would happen differently because kisame would be the one sent out to go kill killer b and since there's no distractions killer b would die 
forcing the Rikage to call a Kage summit. And Obito would use this opportunity to declare the fourth great ninja war. And with this, we would have the war being prepped up and not only Naruto being held at bay, but also Gara because, you know, this war is to protect them. And inevitably, Gara and Naruto go out. Naruto would outspeed the Raikage and surpass him, and this would then lead into Naruto and Gara heading out to go and stop the war. To be honest, I would have Naruto surpass the Raikage similar to how I established in part one how Minato defeated him, basically copying his own technique and just making it better. And with that being said, this would then lead into Gara and Naruto heading out, like I said. However, there is not going to be a reanimated army due to the fact that, one, Kabuto wouldn't absorb Orochimaru because Orochimaru would still be in prison. Two, he would never probably encounter Yamato, or they would never even be in that position to be captured in the first place. And three, Kabuto kind of smells. Anyways, this would lead into not a reanimated army, but just the Akatsuki, Zetsu, and Kabuto basically facing off as the final villains and we could have sasuke and itachi have their final battle here and itachi explained to sasuke as to why he did what he did and with this sasuke would then be granted the manga kill sharingan i think maybe we can give him itachi's eyes maybe itachi before he dies would give him his eyes meaning we can have the ems and with this, we would get Naruto versus Obito inevitably with Gara backing Naruto up, while Naruto would scatter a few shadow clones around the map to basically help out and turn the tides against the war. And as for the Raikage, I'm gonna have the Raikage have that revenge plotline like I always have him in other what ifs, so he'll basically go out and kill Kisame personally. And as for Obito, like I said, Naruto and Gara are facing off against them until Kakashi, Guy, and Minato and Sasuke arrive. With them on Naruto's side, I mean, Naruto alone could probably defeat Obito by copying his phasing ability. But with Minato here, we can have the father-son duo along with Kakashi backing them up and countering Kamui and Guy and Gara and Sasuke to defeat Obito. And when Obito is revealed to be, you know, Obito, Minato and Kakashi are shocked but they decide to put the past behind them and defeat him. Or to be honest, you could have Obito being talk no jutsu'd, but I don't know. I'd rather have Obito just die here, but you could make the argument that Minato would try and talk no jutsu Obito, and Obito would join the good guy's side and basically be in prison in due time. But I'm gonna say Obito dies. And with this, the war arc is wrapped up, and all of Shippuden is just overall easier for our characters, especially Naruto because of his broken ability. But yeah, with that being said, this is going to be concluding our What If Naruto Had Eyes of the Lord What If. And if you guys want more What Ifs like this, let me know down below and be sure to comment these kind of type of What Ifs or whatever. And be sure to like the video and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're new. Please subscribe, man. Majority of my viewers aren't even subscribed and they just find my videos through browsing. Like, bro, subscribe. You like what you see. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tyler and follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, etc, etc, etc. And I'm going to catch you on the next video. Peace out, guys. Thank you.